uh, happy Mothering Sunday to uh, everyone who has uh, been a mother, is a mother, or has mothered to anybody. So yeah, happy Mothering Sunday uh, to you all. Um, just a few notices from me before we start. Um, so we have a few more jobs to finish off in the hall um, with cleaning and tidying, kind of just uh, getting things ready as we get ready to go back to the building. Um, so if you uh, have some time this week and you would be able to help uh, either see uh, Richard or John um, about that, just to see what we need to do, um, it would be really appreciated if you just have half a day, a couple of hours, uh, whatever you have available this week to just come and get things finalised and ready, ready to roll for us to be back in the building. Um, also, a bit of an unusual one, but um, we have some surplus pine and stone from the church, from the building that was kept um, to possibly be reused during the building project, which is no longer needed. So maybe you have a summer project of a, a rockery in the garden you've always wanted to do, or uh, I don't know, um, <laughs> uh, maybe you want to build a shed in the back garden. It's like a lockdown project, isn't it? It's one of those things. Um, but if you would like some of that, please see John. Um, John has some available. Uh, through the church. Uh, we're not delivering, okay? All right, no, uh, John will not be carrying stone on his back, on his bike, on his way to, um, to, to your house. You'll have to pick that up yourself, but please um, let us know if there's any of that that you would be interested in. Fantastic. Well, I will open up our service of prayer, so let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, that we can come and worship you this morning. Thank you that uh, the sun is shining and that it is a good day, Father. Father, we thank you for all of the mothers today, um, anyone who is a mum, wants to be a mum, and everything in between, Father God. We just thank you for that precious, precious gift of being a mother. And Father, we just thank you and pray you bless every single person who is there today. So, Father, we pray uh, as we open this service that we thank you that you just come and uh, be with us in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to stand and sing our first song, which is Mighty to Save. Let's stand and sing together.
fantastic. Uh, so, we're going to now sing our children's song. So, who can remember anybody? What our children's song has been? We've done it three weeks ago? Four? Maybe four? I can't remember. Anybody? Come on. Go on, Presley. Every move I make, fantastic. So, if you would like to, everybody stand up again. Get you moving this morning. And we will stand and sing our children's song. So let's get dancing, let's have some fun, and let's praise Jesus this morning. Every move I make. getting into it, very slowly getting into some of these action songs. Uh, we're going to try a different one next week as uh, we start to build up our repertoire before the long months of exile come to an end and we move back into our building. But first, our memory verse. You all remember the memory verse? Oh, say it with me. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We've been looking at this for a month. We've been looking at what it means. And this morning, I just want us to focus on, on these couple of, of words that God 
has prepared good works in advance for us to do. What does that mean? It means as if there are things that God uh, has kind of created us to be involved with. We still have a choice of whether we will or whether we won't. If we do, we are blessed by doing them. If we don't, well, we miss out in some way. But God has a purpose for every life. God's got a purpose for your life, my life, everybody's life. And the sad thing is many people in ignoring God are missing the purpose for which they were made. So just as we think of how we are God's workmanship, all of us, that God is working on us and has crafted us and shaped us into the people we are, and when we become new creatures in Christ Jesus, uh, we're saved to serve those good works God has prepared. There is a, a destiny, a purpose for every one of us. Okay, does anyone think they can say the memory verse? Who wants to have a go this morning? Don't all rush. <laughs> go ahead. Jackie. Let's see if Jackie can do the memory verse. Here we are. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2 verse 10. <laughs> We printed some sheets for you to take over and put on your bridges. There's some left in the foyer. Anybody else want to have a go? I'm threatening to bring the breach ball back. <laughs> you know that and throw it out into the congregation. And Leanne. Leanne. So we are God's workmanship prepared in advance. Created. Created in advance uh, for God. For for we are God's workmanship. For we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works by Christ. Which God? Which God? Prepared in advance. Prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians. Ephesians 2 chapter. I know. It's difficult. So the microphone is in the face. It is very difficult. You watch these television quiz shows and you sit in there and you've got all the answers and you think I could go on there if you go on and the cameras are there uh, it's a yeah, different it's a yeah it's a different proposition Daniel yeah. for we are for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do Ephesians 10 to 2 10 to Oh. Anybody at the south dance? <laughs> Elaine says she did it last week. Oh. Anybody else? It's really good for us to stretch our memories, train our memories. If you don't use it, you lose it. So if you want to, as you get older, keep that uh, ability, uh, train your memory and use it now. And Bible verses are a good way to do that. So let's say it together one more time. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. Okay, the building work is getting much closer to completion. Our exile is nearly over. And we are planning uh, to be back in the church, God willing, two weeks time. Two weeks time. We may be using this door, <laughs> okay, uh, opposite the hall. Uh, we're not sure that this will be finished and uh, underneath the balcony, uh, that community area uh, could still be a bit of a building site. 
but the the sanctuary should be ready uh, not fully not everything working properly uh, the sound and all of those things we're going to have to do our best uh, but we are expecting to be back in the building you see the, the pack has now been built that they are putting the roof on the, the new entrance um, uh, this area, the outside is all finished, two tiles to be replaced there. Uh, that door is going to have to be widened for fire safety regulations, but uh, the, the concrete thing is going down uh, and everything's coming on. So on April the 10th, next week is April the 3rd, on April the 10th, we will not be here, we will be back in Park Avenue. Put that in your diaries, okay? And some things just uh, also to put in your diary. We are hoping on the Friday night before that, just to have a time of rededication, prayer and praise in the sanctuary, seven o'clock on the Friday night to rededicate it uh, after all the building work and just to pray for the, the moving and the filling of God's spirit within his house. If you could join us that night, please do. It's not for outsiders and visitors. It's going to be, you know, some praying, prayer meeting. You with me? Uh, you understand the difference? It's not a, a service. Then on April the 10th, the first Sunday we're back in, it's going to be a family service. And the children will be staying in for the greater part of that service and taking part in the service. The following Sunday is Easter Sunday, so there'll be a Good Friday morning, there'll be Easter Sunday services, and then on April the 24th, we've got some baptisms. So if you have not yet been baptized as a believer, and would like to know more, come and see me after for one of our, our books on this. I'd like you to have a look at that, and at the moment there are three people looking to be baptized on the 24th of April, God willing. Okay, so we've got a lot of good things happening, a lot of things starting to, to come together. Uh, and uh, I was just thinking about as we were sitting there, our exile is nearly over. Remember the Jews in exile in Babylon? And they came back to Jerusalem, but there was still a lot of work to do when they got there. Uh, and it's a little bit like that with us, and then we can redevelop the worship team again, and Sunday club will have the hall to go to, uh, uh, and all of those things. One more Sunday here. Hallelujah. Let's just commit that to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for having been with us through this period of exile and uh, COVID. And now, Lord, as we start to take these steps towards returning to our home at Park Avenue, we pray your blessing on our moving back in. We pray your blessing, Lord, on every activity that will take place there. We ask that Jesus will be honoured and glorified in all that is said and done. For his name's sake. Amen. Okay, we are going to sing another song before we come to God's word about how the name of Jesus is such a, a, a wonderful and beautiful name. Let's stand together and sing.
from John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man comes after me, has surpassed me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. The next day John was there again with two of his disciples, and when he saw Jesus passing by he said, Look, the Lamb of God! And when the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning round, Jesus saw them following and said, What do you want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, 
and spent that day with him. It was about the tenth hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. May the Lord bless the public reading of his word. Amen. There was a cartoon on social media from Mother's Day. And uh, my first impression was that it was both funny and true. There's two little children and uh, they drag their mum out the front and they say, Mum, we've hired a few people to fill in for you while you relax on Mother's Day. And uh, on the front lawn there is a whole crowd of people, a cleaner, a taxi driver, uh, a, a pastor, uh, a cook, a nurse, uh, a clown, uh, a teacher. I'm not sure what this is on, on, on the end there. Uh, it looks to me like some sort of a fortune teller or something. I don't know. I didn't draw this picture, I just found it, okay? And so I might not agree with everything on it. Uh, and uh, on Mother's Day, maybe we do want to honour mothering in the fact that every one of us has had a mother, uh, probably at some time or in some way. And some of you have been mothers or are looking to be mothers or whatever. But as I thought a little bit further about this picture, I had second thoughts. And I thought, no one person can do everything well all the time. There's no perfect mother. What do you think? No perfect mother. Is there? No perfect person. It's too much to expect one person to be all these things. Well, that's why we need families, communities, churches. We heard the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. Maybe a second thought about this is that the mother for all of her goodness and her love and her skills and her talents and abilities still needs a team behind her to help. Because reality, nobody is really good at everything. And we all need each other. Our different gifts and skills and abilities to step in alongside one another. Life is a team game. Make sure that you're part of a team. Christianity is a team game. The church is our team. We've been following a series of messages called Know Your Shape, seeking to recognize our unique guild gifts, skills, talents and abilities, but also while looking at our strengths to recognize our weaknesses, to look at how God has shaped us to serve him but also to recognize those things that we're not good at and maybe we need the help and support of others in the team around us. Our key verse is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, which you all know off by heart. Or maybe not yet. But we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. We have looked at how God has given us spiritual gifts, both natural and supernatural. We've looked how God puts things on our heart, that he makes us passionate about certain things, and it's different for every one of us. We've looked at the abilities that God gives us and the importance of availability to God. Today we're going to look at personality and next time at experiences. 
as we think about our personality every one of us is different and brings something to the collective team insight and ability we've said we're all different shapes and that we need to acknowledge our differences accept our differences value our differences not expect everybody else to be the same as us to think the same as us or feel the same as us or have the same gifts and abilities that we have we need to value each other's shape we said the church is like the shape sorter there is a place for everyone it's a matter of finding your place that place where you fit the place created for you and to take your place with your unique shape your spiritual gifts your heart's passions your practical and spiritual abilities your unique personality and your life experiences now when we think of personality Jesus knew that Peter and Andrew although they were brothers were very different personalities yet he called them both to be his disciples do you have brothers or sisters are you exactly the same or are you very different I am very different to my big sister I don't think any of you have had the opportunity to meet my big sister but if you met my big sister you would not believe that we were family <laughs> we are so very opposite sometimes brothers and sisters their personalities are similar but even twins are unique there's those differences that set them apart don't ever compare yourself with anybody else don't ever measure yourself about uh, against someone else and think oh well they're better than me or worse than me or I, I need to be as good as them just be the person that God has made you to be use the personality that he's given you and use that for his glory Peter was an extrovert loud and outgoing quick to make bold decisions fueled by the emotions and by crowds Jesus gives him immediately a nickname because Peter would love having a nickname he's Cephas Peter or in, in English Rocky and you can imagine you know Peter's uh, chest swelling a little bit and that recognition that he was unique Andrew doesn't get a nickname but then maybe he doesn't need one or want one or would like one you see Andrew is more of an introvert quiet reserved slow and thoughtful in his decisions prefers to be on the fringes of the crowd they're different personalities but God Jesus called them both and both worked good service great service for Jesus you don't have to be like anybody else just be yourself give yourself to Jesus and let him work in and through you let's take a little closer look this morning at Andrew and uh, at times contrast him with Peter and see the spiritual impact of our personality in our walk with Jesus Christ first of all we learn something from Andrew about personality types if you have a Bible you might like to look at John chapter 1 and verse 41 let me give you the, the background of what's going on here John the Baptist has been preaching and, uh, and he sees Jesus he's baptized Jesus and he points to Jesus and says look behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the of the world and as he says that he points to Jesus and points out his uniqueness and uh, that he is the, the divine son of God the Messiah Andrew is one of two disciples who hears John the Baptist point to Jesus 
And so he follows Jesus, spends the day with him, asking questions, listening to the answer, checking out whether John's assessment is true. Because Andrew is not somebody who rushes into things. Andrew is somebody who's cautious, thoughtful. And at the end of the day, he's convinced Jesus is indeed the Messiah. So the Bible says, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and followed Jesus. And the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we found the Messiah. And Andrew brings Peter to Jesus. And Peter comes to faith in Jesus. And Peter is the one who many people know the most about. Peter is the perhaps the most famous of Jesus' 12 disciples because he preached to the crowd and he did so much. And his stories are recorded in all four Gospels of his relationship with Jesus and his highs and his lows. And Peter is a character that everybody kind of is attracted to. But he only comes to Jesus in the first place because of Andrew. Is there someone that you can help to come to Jesus? If you're like Peter, then you're quick to make decisions and you're enthusiastic about everything. But if you're like Andrew, the quieter. Peter would be happy on John Street on a Tuesday. He would, he'd be up for it. He'd want to take part in the open air at the bandstand on Good Friday. But Andrew was better one-to-one, -one, quietly sharing his faith over a coffee in Costa. Maybe inviting one of his family members or his friends to come and sit with him in church at Easter. Or saying to someone, have you ever seen a baptism? Why don't you come along and have a little look, you can sit by me. Maybe take his friend to an Alpha course. Or invite them onto the bus to hear Franklin Graham. Do you see the importance of the I Am Andrew initiative? where it encourages those of us who are like Andrew to pray for our family and our friends, to find a gentle way of sharing our faith, whichever suits us best, to bring them along to something with us, and then to follow that up. And we'll, we'll look more at this perhaps next week. But people like Andrew are just as important as people like Peter. Which are you more like, Andrew or Peter? Neither is wrong, both are great. As long as you are using a personality for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're not, neither Peter or Andrew, maybe you're a John. You know, maybe you're one of those people who, like John the Apostle, like, like to write letters and books. You're good at emails or, or whatever. Everybody's different. Know your shape and use that shape to serve God with your skills, with your heart, with your ability and with your personality. So here's a little question. Is there somebody you can invite and bring to Jesus over the next few weeks or months? And secondly, we learn something about personality tests. If you've got the Bible and you look at Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, it says this. Jesus went up on a mountainside, called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, designating them apostles, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. And one of those he appointed was Andrew. Another was Peter and 10 others. The first 12 disciples or apostles. 
and they were a mixed bag of personalities just like us there is a place for all kinds of people on Jesus team but notice here Jesus asks people like Andrew to do something that pushes them beyond their comfort zone he tests personality here Jesus sends out the 12 disciples to preach in the public areas of society in the synagogue or in the marketplace to pray for the sick to be healed to bring deliverance to the demonized to leave their ordinary occupations for three years and to train to serve Jesus better and uh, I don't know about you but I imagine Peter's reaction to all of this would be yes let's go for it I'm excited he's enthusiastic because that's the kind of person Peter was we're going out on the streets let's go and when Jesus says that to Andrew Andrew oh no and he feels anxiety and he's nervous because it's not his personality he doesn't like the crowds he likes to be on the fringes and yet despite all of that Andrew does what Jesus calls and asks him to do Jesus takes Andrew out of his comfort zone do you see it are you willing to do what God wants you to do even if it tests your personality takes you outside your comfort zone I think we ought to be willing to if God calls God will empower and enable God will most often use you within your personality type but don't let that personality type limit you because we have a God who has no limits a God who is supernatural a God who will enable you to do things that in otherwise you would never have had the courage or the inclination to do he'll call you out of your comfort zone are you up for that Maybe like Andrew saying, I don't, I don't really want to. But if Jesus wants me to, I will. I wonder if anybody here has ever taken a, a personality test. Anybody ever done a personality? A couple of hands right at the back. A few others now have started to show in the center. Well, earlier this week, I typed into a search engine free Christian personality tests. And probably the first word there reveals something about my personality, doesn't it? I didn't want to pay for it, I'm tight, okay? <laughs> so I thought, free personality tests. And one of the first things I, I found was actually, because much of the material we're using from Shape is from a, a, a Christian course, called the Shape Course, that there is actually a free Shape test that you can do online. If you're one of those personalities who likes these things, uh, I can give you the, um, the, 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 the websites to look up, okay? And there is a free shape test. That one is quite a long one. It'll probably take you half a day to go through. Okay, it, it does ask searching questions, uh, but it is worth doing. Uh, for those of you who like that sort of thing, okay? Not everybody does. Uh, this other one, uh, I looked up three, christiannet.com Bible personality test. Uh, and that one only took me about 15 minutes because I can do these things fairly quickly. That's my personality. You know, I'll rush into these things. Uh, and uh, that was interesting. It told me different things about me. I thought, okay. Uh, and then I did this BibleLife.org personality test. That only took me about 15, 20 minutes as well. And uh, on this one, uh, it kind of seeks to find out whether uh, you are more of an extrovert or an introvert, 
whether when you are making decisions you do it by uh, your sensing or intuition whether you uh, when you are uh, trying to process sorry, process information by sense or by intuition when you make decisions by thinking or feeling by your, your heart or your head uh, and when you are uh, looking to, to structure your life whether you're somebody who likes to have uh, that kind of judgment of any plan or perception and go again with with your feelings uh, and it gives you four letters at the end and it could be say e i t p something like that uh, and it helps you understand your personality I thought, okay that's interesting but at the bottom of the page there was more definition the strengths and weaknesses for each four letters and i clicked on mine to see what it said my strengths and weaknesses were wow it could have been writing my cv uh, i thought i don't want anybody to see this <laughs> but it's worth knowing uh, the, the tendencies for people with my personality uh, and you know if you're into this sort of thing you then want to work at your strengths work to your strengths and work at your weaknesses uh, and when you apply these things to the bible uh, these kind of four letter things you'll find that everybody in the bible uh, has different personalities no one of god's great servants is exactly the same and that's worth remembering none of us are the same we don't have to be any like anybody else but know your shape know your personality just don't allow it to limit you when God calls make sense okay third personalities tasks types tests and tasks some of the things that God would have us do suit our personalities better than others so the Bible tells us quite a lot about Peter's personality it tells us much less about John, about Andrew's personality but there are two key passages one is in John chapter 6 and verse 8 where uh, the Bible says another of Jesus disciples Andrew Simon Peter's brother and you can see something about Andrew's personality here every time he's mentioned in the Bible it's Simon Peter's brother <laughs> I wonder if that got to him sometimes everybody knew Peter Peter was the life and the soul of the party Andrew was the quiet wallflower and yet God used and blessed him so when they're out preaching and teaching and there's 5,000 people and they're hungry hungry Andrew Simon's Peter comes to Jesus and says look I found this boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish how far will they go among so many and as he brings these to Jesus it's Andrew does it not Peter Peter's into other things but Andrew is thoughtful looking watching thinking processing he brings them to Jesus and as he brings to Jesus those things his personality has shown him or led him to Jesus does miracles doesn't he feeds 5,012 baskets left over there is no limit to what God can do through every one of us Peter might have preached to 3,000 Andrew fed 5,000 different tasks but God glorified the second occasion is in John chapter 12 and verses 20 to 23 where in the last week in in Jerusalem before Jesus is crucified dies and rises again uh, some Greek visitors hear Jesus preaching they were among those worshiping at the feast of, uh, of Passover and they come to Philip who's from Bethsaida in Galilee with a request sir they said we'd like to see Jesus they come to Philip because Philip's name is Greek it's not a Jewish name so maybe Philip is half Greek and half Jewish but he's one of Jesus's disciples 
Maybe he speaks Greek. So the Greeks come to Philip and they say, we'd like to have a, a meeting with Jesus. We'd like to chat with him personally. And Philip is not sure what to do. He's uncertain. So what does he do? You don't ask Peter. Peter would rush into things. Either give a quick answer, yes, come on, or no, send them away. Uh, with Peter, there's, there's no grey, it's black or white. So instead he goes to Andrew. Philip went to tell Andrew. And Andrew says, come on, let's go and have a chat with Jesus. And Andrew and Philip in turn tell Jesus. And this meeting is set up with the Greeks because of Andrew and Philip and prophecy is being fulfilled of Jesus being a light to the Greeks, to the Gentiles, and Andrew is part of the process of that prophecy being fulfilled through his personality and his willingness to use it in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you see it? it might only be quiet little things in the background, but it makes a significant difference. We are saved and we are shaped to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And that shaping includes our personality. Okay. Did you see the football this week? Oh, I thought we'd have a cheer there. Or maybe it's just my personality that wants to cheer for this. Gareth Bale, the star player, scored both goals to allow Wales to beat Australia and have a playoff with the hope of, for the first time for 60, 70 years, to get to the actual World Cup finals. Is it only me that's excited about this? Or uh, one or two others? But listen. No matter how good Gareth Bale is, was, or will be, he can't win on his own. He needs a team around him. Other players, people with different skills, different roles, different shapes, different sizes. And only if all the team are playing their part will Gareth realise his dream of playing with Wales in the World Cup Finals later this summer. He needs everybody else just as much as they need him. And in the work of God, if we to see the vision, the dream that God has given us fulfilled in our church to know Jesus better and make Jesus better known, we need each other to play our parts, however small that part may seem, however insignificant it might feel. It may be that some others are the stars that get all the glory and the publicity doesn't matter because nobody can do it on their own, not even Gareth Bale. I love the Welsh football team logo. We are Wales together stronger. Have you come across that before? Together stronger. And in this uh, publicity, uh, you'll see it. It's not just the players there, but the fans. Children and adults, uh, male and female, young and old, everybody together, together, stronger. That's what makes a winning team. Teamwork works. That's what church ought to be. So let's know our shape, play our part, remember that we have a unique personality. Don't let that personality be a limit, but bring it to God. And together, let's glorify our Heavenly Father. Let's come to God in prayer. Father God, you've made us all different. Help us to respect and value our differences. Help us, Lord, to not compare ourselves with others, but to ask your help to be the best us that we can be. And to make 
ourselves available to you. Thank you, Jesus, for making me, me, us, who we are. Lord, we continue to give ourselves to you. Every part of us. For your glory and honour and service. Change us, mould us. Help us to progress. But Lord, we acknowledge who we are. We thank you for everything you've made us. Amen. That's our worship team to come back. We're going to lead us in, uh, first of all, a prayerful song of response. And this prayerful song of response, we can say, sing, sitting down. It's a song, we put the words up and just have a little look at this. Jesus, take me as I am. I think these words are powerful. Take me as I am. I didn't come no other way anyway. But take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life, that's the kind of worldly side of me, melt away. Make me like a precious stone. And with the diamonds, they have to be kind of smoothed and cut and polished. And sometimes God has to do that with areas of our life. He has to challenge us, change us. Make me like a precious stone, crystal clear and finely bold, with the life and the light of Jesus shining through to give glory back to you. Can we sing this as a prayer? Uh, and this Sunday again, give ourselves to Jesus. Say, so continue your work in my life and my personality. We'll stay seated.
the style, in the stillness and the silence. If there's something in your heart that you need to pray over, something in your personality uh, that challenges you, or just to respond to whatever God has been saying to you today, take a moment now, as we have a moment's just quiet meditation and silence before God. We are private internal prayers. church this morning, you've got a problem or a worry on your heart or on your mind, there will be some of our prayer team in the prayer corner here at the end of the service and you can uh, come and be prayed for. Don't take your problems out of church, leave them here. Uh, get prayed for if you've got a worry or there's something on your heart or mind this morning. We're going to sing our final hymn and close in prayer. And if you're able to stay and enjoy some tea and coffee and fellowship with us, please do so. Let's sing again. What a beautiful name is the name of Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man. Spirit be with us all evermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.